played in these games, what's your feeling about the, the one game wild card and if you had a choice as you're collectively bargaining, would you want to expand the playoffs? Would you want to expand the series? What would you like to do? Uh, honestly, I hadn't thought about it. So, uh, you know, I just focuses on tonight's game and just uh, try to go and win. It's a, you know, it's exciting. And, you know, I think the winner likes it more than the loser, of course, but these games are usually uh, pretty entertaining and uh, you never know what's going to happen with, uh, you know, one game. There's no buildup, you know, like a normal five or seven game series. So uh, it's different, but, uh, you know, it's fun and hopefully we'll go out there and play well. How did you like the two out of three last year with, with, when you played against the Padres? It's kind of the same thing. It was a little different. You know, you weren't really sure. Last year was such an anomaly with how the whole season went. So, uh, you know, whatever they decide to do, we just go out there and try to play and uh, hopefully win. Thanks. Jeff. Although you've been kind of through what Nolan is going through today, you go through trade in the offseason, you get to a new team, and then it kind of goes the way you want. You're playing in a postseason game. What's that feeling like with that first postseason game with a new club? And how excited, I guess, are all to, to see Nolan be part of that team? Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, that's what you want to do, whether it's with a new team or a team you've been with. So, you know, it's, uh, it's why you play. It's why you train in the off season. It's where your focus is the whole year is trying to give yourself a chance in the playoffs. And to get that opportunity is great. And, and hopefully we can take advantage of it and play well and, and get a win. How transformative was he all year in, in terms of setting up that defense the way that you guys wanted it and the way it's been all season? Yeah, he was huge. I mean, he can do it on both sides of the ball, which is why he's been such a great player. You know, he made so many great plays on defense and uh, drove in a lot of runs, had some big hits for us, and just, uh, you know, was great, great for us overall. I guess when Mike Schultz was in here earlier, he talked about the lineup construction and how he really liked the length of this lineup. Harrison, with your and Tyler's September surges that were really symbolic in that 17-game winning streak, how do you feel like the length of the lineup will benefit you guys tonight? I think Goldie had a pretty good September, too. Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, you know, Schilte's had a, a run a good lineup out there. We had a lot of success in September, like you mentioned. So, um, you know, I think the lineup is very versatile, and we have the ability to do a lot of things, whether it's, you know, play for a run or, you know, hit a home run, whatever it might be. I think the the, uh, the length, like you mentioned, will, will be beneficial for us tonight. Paul, same thing. What are you seeing from the lineup? Someone who's, you know, bats up at number two, how the lineup complements each other throughout the batting order. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about a lot about the year, but I think one of our strengths is the depth of our team in all parts. You know, our starting pitching, the bullpen, and then, of course, the, the lineup as well. And, you know, we've it's, if we're going to win, it's going to take, you know, an effort, a good effort from all of us. And that's what it was all year. There wasn't one or two guys carrying us. Um, there was big hits, you know, one through nine throughout the lineup, all trying to do our job. And you know, that's what we'll take tonight as well. Thanks, guys. Tyler, we, we talked to shortstops in the second base a lot about that. That's a good question. Um, you know, I think uh, this is really the first year that we've been able to play um, together collectively, consistently, and uh, you know, I mean, we're only going to get more comfortable out there too. Um, we all trust our abilities. Uh, you know, we're great outfielders out there. We're a great unit. You know, we communicate well, hit the right bases, hit the cutoff man, do all the right uh, little things. So, um, you know, we're just going to keep doing that, keep training hard. Yeah, I, mean, I think Tyler said it best. You know, the unit, the, the word the unit, unit stands out. Um, you know, the most important thing is being each other's eyes, you know, especially as an off outfielder, working together pre pitch, understanding what our pitch is trying to do, the, the batter, you know, Yachty and everything. So, you know, being a collective unit out there is, is really important. We move together, we have each other's backs to prevent, you know, extra base hits when balls are hitting the gap. So, you know, when you have a, a unit like that working together, it's a, it's a pretty good force. So. so I wondered if Tyler, if it allows you to be a little bit more aggressive, maybe even like aggressive toward the line or aggressive on singles. For sure. I mean, Harry's got some of the best range I've ever seen out the center. So, um, you know, I know I can shade a little more towards the line if I have to, uh, especially in certain scenarios. You know, it all depends on the hitter. Um, you know, we do our research and uh, we got good uh, defense analytics to make sure we're in the right spot and stuff. So, you know, just playing the game, reading swings, and um, trusting our instincts. Tyler, can you describe uh, your approach and how you um, how you look at a matchup against Max Scherzer? Do you look at him just as another pitcher? Do you hold him in awe? How do you how do you handle this? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we're uh, we're competitors, obviously. So you know, we obviously know that uh, Max is a good arm. Uh, you know, we got to bring our A game today, and uh, you know, to stay on the plate is going to be key. So um, obviously, getting a good pitch to hit is, is step one. So um, being able to execute a good swing off that is uh, what's going to, you know, that's how we're going to try and do it today. Well, you know very well, Adam. Uh, how is he his high pressure games? Uh, Wainwright? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be great. I mean, he's got a lot of experience doing it, closed out the World Series, NLCS. He's, he's been in every situation possible, so we'll definitely lean on him. He's carried us this year. He's been great. We had a lot of, you know, times where we had lost a few games in a row and he had stepped up and, and competed out there, and I think you know, you feel that, uh, you know, as, as an offense that he's out there and you, you want to go out there and play well for him, play well, play good D. So he's great out there and, um, you know, we're happy to have him on the mound. Um, Paul, so as someone who, you know, played in the NL West for as long as you did and played here as much as you did and had as much success here as you did, I'm just wondering, is that president in your mind at all for a game like this? Is that something that, you know, you maybe talked about with Nolan Arnott and we had sort of a similar situation for? Um, I mean, I think I have a lot of memories playing here. Some of them are good and some are bad. So um, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, today is such a unique day. One game playoff, wild card game. You know, we're on different teams now. But, um, you know, I know the atmosphere here is going to be great. There's going to be a ton of fans. It's going to be really loud. Um, and, you know, you even saw that, you know, with Boston and New York last night. It's, it's really cool. And I think, you know, that's what we're excited for. That's what you want to play. You know, those mundane games where, there's maybe not many fans out there, you know, this is a little easier to get ready for and, and something we enjoy. And you know the crowd, it's going to be loud. They're going to be part of the game and, uh, you know, try to use that to our advantage. Paul, if you can take it some ground with the Juan at uh, first base, he said he's tried to soak up a little bit from you. Just how do you bridge a guy into his first big league call up in a, in a game like this? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't imagine being in that spot. So, uh, you know, I'm sure. He's been playing well this year and prepared. And I think, you know, I just remember getting called up. We were in the playoff race, you know, when I was in Arizona, we were a couple games back at San Fran, who was the defending champs. And we actually got to play in the playoffs that year. So um, for me, it was just trying to, to do the same things I did in the minor leagues and not make the moment bigger than it is. I think those truths still hold true now, even, you know, going from the regular season to the postseason. But it's even, you know, bigger as a rookie or a guy who hasn't even played in the big leagues. Um, so, you know, I think. That was the key and something I was just trying to work on every day was to just kind of continue what I had done in the minor leagues and, and not try to do something different. And, uh, you know, was able to have some success. There's there's going to be struggles, too, because, I mean, just the guys are the guys are really good. The pitchers are good and stuff like that. So um, I know he'll be prepared and um, and be ready to go. Yeah, I know Goldie doesn't like stuff like this, so <laughs> bear with me, Goldie. Um, no, you know, I've, we've been fortunate enough to be with Goldie for a couple of years now. Um, the biggest thing that was told to us before we walked in the clubhouse in, sp in spring training was the notion of leadership, you know, and it's easy to talk about leaders. It's easy to, you know, imagine what a leader might be in a clubhouse. Um, but to work with one every single day on the field, away from the field, to just truly experience what that is. I mean, that's what Goldie is through and through. So, you know, even if he didn't have his best September or as good of a sep as September as he did, uh, the guy is still a leader, you know, top to bottom every single day. Uh, just someone you rely on, you lean on, especially when, you know, you're kind of grabbing your bat and you're leading an inning off and it's a pitch you might not necessarily know too much about. He's just prepared so well. He's been there. And even if he sometimes doesn't really know what he's talking about, it definitely sounds like he does, so it gives me confidence. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, you know, I have a running joke, and it's like, you know, Goldie, our, our savior. And, uh, you know, it's true because the guy just is just rocks and just nails. And, you know, you can't ask for anything more out of a teammate, out of a, a person that you, uh, you know, work with every day. So, so yeah, the September that Goldie had was definitely something to, fun to be part of. Paul, do you agree with that? 
<laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I just wanted to try to do my job. I think that's where the focus is. And, um, you know, we got a bunch of good leaders in this clubhouse. I think of Yachty and Wayno and, you know, but they give guys the freedom to be who they are, and, and all of us are different. And, um, you know, it's taken a collective group. But I definitely just try to do my job and help where I can and learn from these guys and learn from everyone too. So it doesn't really change too much. And um, I'd say hopefully we'll go out there and play well.